kind of a weird, dark comedy about this street thug in a kind of fantasy noirish world full of monsters and it's kind of nutty, kind of serious sometimes. It's kind of it's hard to explain. It's it's one of those things you got to have to read really. The story now is kind of taking a, a, a different turn, um, not entirely, but uh, I, I've just finished this graphic novel, Chinatown, um, which was a, definitely a more serious take on the character and the world, and um, uh, that is kind of uh, allowing me to do some of the storylines that I originally had envisioned, you know, that the character evolving a little bit and going into this area and not quite being such just a silly comic anymore is kind of I still have those elements in there but I wanted to to have you know some depth to the character and to the world and everything so it's um, now that I've Chinatown is out there and it's giving a little bit more of the backstory I'm able to kind of move things forward and develop the character a little bit more and um, kind of uh, resolve some storylines that I've been um, working on from the very beginning I was doing it independently at first um, uh, with a small press publisher and then I went from that to self-publishing and uh, because I was having a little bit of trouble finding a publisher because I think it was so offbeat a lot of the publishers didn't quite, quite uh, get it and um, then I started producing some issues myself self-publishing and a lot of people at Dark Horse uh, we're taking a look at it and just reading it, and uh, uh, that kind of kind of saw where it was going. Then it was like, "Oh, this is what this is," and um, so it, yeah, then they contacted me about picking it up. I love working with Dark Horse. They're they're a great publisher. It's uh, it's nice to to have a working relationship uh, with a company where you're you're not only um, you know, in a business relationship, but it, you you also have friendships there, and uh, I, I definitely consider uh, everyone at Dark Horse a friend, and that's that's a good thing to have. When I'm laying out an issue, I usually start with um, uh, actually the dialogue. You know, I'll come up with a rough plot and say this is what I want to happen in this book, and then and then. Um, the dialogue is a really major part, I think, of the, the comic. It's the, the interaction between the characters and the kind of weird dialogue I've kind of established in the book. Um, I think it's one of the things that uh, makes it a little different, you know, than other stuff out there. And um, so I, I put a lot of work into the dialogue. So I, I will go through and pretty much just write out all of the dialogue and then format the comic to fit into that, you know, break up the script with the dialogue. And then uh, take that and work in layouts, and then you know continue to the pages, the finished art. When I first started wanting to get into comics, I was just like everybody else. You know, I I, I want to do Spider-Man and Batman and all this stuff. You know, but um, you kind of get, at least for me anyway, I've kind of kind of come to realize it's like. Yeah, I, I'm never gonna do the John Byrne X-Men. That was John Byrne's X-Men. So, um, yeah, I, I think I should just do my own book. You know, it's kind of like, I, you know, I, I can't live my career vicariously through, a, you know, wanting to be another guy. So it's kind of like, I, I, I have too much fun doing my own book. There's a lot of freedom and, uh, and you know, I definitely enjoy, I have done some work for DC and, and Marvel and it's, it's a lot of fun, but, at the end of the day, it's, it's always more fun to do my own book.